Today we'll be discussing the journey to law school. So I'm gonna start by telling you a little bit about my background and how I decided to go to law school. So I was never one of those people that knew I wanted to be a lawyer from the age of 10. I actually had no idea what I wanted to do until I was in my last year of college at an internship in Washington, D.C., working on Capitol Hill for a congressman. It was a super amazing experience. Decided I maybe wanted to get into politics, and so that's where I decided law school would be the best bet. Fast forward a little bit, I decided politics isn't for me, but law school was still the best option for the career choices I wanted to get into. From there, I decided let's get started, let's figure out what the process is, and first thing we gotta figure out is deciding what law school to go to. So how do you figure that out? And how important is it to really go to a top law school like Harvard? Let's break this down. It really isn't that important to go to Harvard. Yes, it's great, if you get into Harvard, awesome, but most jobs don't really require you to be a Harvard or a Yale graduate. The types of jobs that might require that are big law firms or some corporate firms. But otherwise, if you wanna own your own law firm, go ahead and pick a law school that fits you best and you can go for it that way. Another thing to keep in mind is your geographic location. Where do you wanna end up working? You might want to stick kind of close to that area just because you'll build your network there, you'll be able to take on jobs, internships in that area. Okay, so the next thing we need to think about when you're deciding your law school is cost. And law school is expensive. Everyone's gonna come out with debt, so don't be scared of debt. I know it's not something you wanna have, but unless you can afford $250,000, you're not gonna be able to come out of law school without debt. So when you're coming down to deciding your options, you should think about schools that may offer you scholarships. Depending on your LSAT and your GPA, which are the number two top important things that you need to get into a good law school. So you'll need a really good LSAT score and a GPA in order to get into you know, good law schools. Now, some schools don't need as high of a GPA or as high of an LSAT score. So if you get into those schools with higher LSATs and GPAs, you might be able to get a scholarship. So maybe the, the law school doesn't have the highest rank, but at least you'll come out of law school with a little bit less debt. So what do you need in order to get into law school? I mentioned this before, but you need a really good LSAT score and GPA. So let's talk about preparing for the LSAT. You want to make sure you take the LSAT at least a year before you plan on applying to law schools because you want to give yourself enough time to study, to prepare, and um, apply to your schools. I always recommend giving yourself at least three to six months to start studying and before you start studying you can take a practice test to see where you score. Now don't get discouraged because sometimes you'll take the practice test and you have absolutely no idea what it is so your score may be super low but that shouldn't discourage you because you're hopefully gonna choose a really good LSAT prep program that will put you in a good routine and get your score up substantially from what you wanna be. That would be my recommendation on LSAT prep. You can take the LSAT as many times as you want. So if you don't do well on the first time, don't be discouraged again. You can take it again. It's a hard test and I'll be honest with you, I never really got the LSAT. The LSAT is not anything like law school or the bar exam. So once you get into law school, it gets a little bit better. So let's talk about what you can do in college and getting your LSAT applications together. Best thing you need to do, do well in your school grades. You don't have to get straight A's, but you know, do very decently well, as well as you can. Your law school applications will require you to have a personal statement, letters of recommendations, and a transcript along with a resume. So let's talk a little, very briefly about letters of recommendation. You wanna make sure you're asking people that you actually have authentic relationships with for them to write your, your letters of recommendation. A lot of people go to professors that they've had for one class that they haven't built a professional relationship with and will ask them to write a letter of rec. Now it comes off very um, not personal and law school admissions council will notice that. So while you're in college, think about building these relationships with your professors, with your, your TAs, or with your bosses at work. Because these are the people that will write letters of recommendation for you, put in that good word for you, and show your special characters that law school applications don't necessarily show. You also want to think about some extracurriculars to do in college. It's not required, 
Um, when I was in college, I did a lot of extracurriculars. Um, I was in a sorority and I eventually became president. And I also um, did a couple other things, some internships and jobs. Now remember, these things are not gonna get you into law school. They help you stand out from similarly ranked applicants. It all comes down to your LSAT and your GPA. Other things will be like the icing on a cake. So those are some of the most important things you should know on your journey to law school. I parked my car in Harvard Yard. I, I cannot do that. If you have any tips on your own, feel free to share them in the comments, or if you have any questions, leave them there. I love responding to your comments. And if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to Goody Life. Why did I do a thumbs up? <laughs> Let's <laughs> go.